The squat is a basic lower body exercise which can be performed with or without weight on the shoulders in the transverse plane. The squat is a closed chain exercise and the muscle groups which are recruited include the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the gluteus maximus, the gastrocnemius, the abdominals, the erector spinae, and hip stabilizers. This squat utilizes movement at the ankle, knee, and hip joint primarily. Although with a weighted squat, the spine, shoulders, elbows, and wrists also play a part. As the movement is performed, the hips, knee and knee joints undergo flexion and the ankles dorsiflexion until the thighs are approximately parallel with the ground before then returning to the upright position using extension of the hip and knee joints. The feet are placed shoulder width apart and the abdominal muscles are tightened to provide core stability and to help maintain the lordotic curve to the lumbar spine during the movement. It is vital in maintaining balance throughout this exercise to keep the center of gravity over the feet, otherwise rotation would occur which would tip the person forwards or backwards. Therefore it is essential, especially in a weighted squat, that the shoulders remain in line with the feet throughout the entire exercise. The movement of the muscles in the lower body is mainly eccentric on the down phase. The knees are unlocked, which then allows gravity to pull the hips and thighs down along with the trunk. Once the knees are unlocked, the hamstring group begins its eccentric contraction, allowing the speed of descent to be controlled carefully and maintained. The vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius and vastus medialis would also be eccentrically activating to control the knee flexion. Hip stability is important in this phase as the hips cannot be allowed to move unnecessarily to one side or the other. Hip stabilizers will activate primarily isometrically to maintain a slight anterior tilt to the pelvis. The pelvic stability helps to maintain equal weight over each foot. The forces acting on the body during this phase of the squat include compressive force, especially in the spine, created mainly by the force of gravity and also in a weighted squat by the amount of weight on the bar. Also, shearing force or shear stress as the joints are flexed which increases gradually until the pause between down and up phases is reached. And this shear force acts on the articular cartilage as the bones slide and roll. Some bending stress is also applied to the femur, which as it is loaded leads to the shear stress at the knee. In the back squat, where the bare bar is carried on the superior portions of the scapula, there are three main levers created in the downward phase. One is the spine, which is the distance from the bar to the articulation between L5 and S1. This lever is maintained by the spine stabilizing muscles like the erector spinae and if maintained properly stops the force that is created by the lift up from dissipating and causing injury. The second lever is created as the hip uh, the hips are moved backwards in relation to the shoulders and consists of the proximal femur in the acetabulum and the line of vector created by the downward force of the bar and in this squat more force is exerted on the hip than on the knee. The third lever occurs from the line of vector produced by the bar on the femur and the knee joint. 
Each of these levers length increases during the descent phase if correct technique and posture is maintained throughout and the subsequent torque applied to the joints is also increased. The ascent phase, also known as the concentric phase, is the final part of the squat. The vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis and gluteus maximus contract concentrically against gravity to push upwards and extend the knee and hip joints. This gradually decreases the torque and shear stress on the joints as the levers decrease in length until the only, only the compressive forces remain in the upright position as the body is straightened and the muscles become less stretched and therefore can activate more muscle to be contracted as they go. As is shown here, on the left is an Olympic weightlifter and on the right is me. The professional maintains excellent spinal posture in the lumbar region, whereas I allow a lessening of the curvature to take place, lessening the amount of force I can apply to stand up again. Also, at the very end of the downward phase, my heels lift very slightly, which could be due to a tight posterior compartment of the, my lower legs or from a stiffness in the ankle joints themselves. This could also be caused by a lack of balance during the exercise. The lessening of the lumbar curvature can be fixed by actively maintaining the isometric tension in the back muscles and the abdominal muscles. And I could also strengthen these muscles by doing hip raises from a supine position on the floor and rotational crunching exercises and pelvic floor exercises. As to the lower issue, if it is caused by improper balance, then practicing slower in front of a mirror and monitoring the position of my shoulders over my midfoot might help. If it is caused by stiff joints, then joint play and mobilization would help the ankle joints to move more freely and allow more range of motion. If it is that the posterior muscles are tight, then manual therapy along with stretching will assist to lengthen the muscles and if they are tight because they are weak then strengthening exercises such as calf raises may assist. <laughs>